everyone, this is Chris. Thank you for joining me. Today's video is about uh, an alternative to brushos. Brushos can be very expensive and in some places it's hard to find. So I found a way very simple to replace your brushos in a variety of colors because they are all mixable. So here I just uh, use that technique to make these flowers. Um, I have, for this flower, I have used three dies and one stamp. Uh, if you want to see how I made the flower, I'll show you this in another tutorial, but it's not uh, this tutorial today, it's just the brushos. So same flower, two different colors, one matte, one with a uh, glossy varnish on top. This is optional, it's what you prefer. And here are some examples of um, the results that you get with the brushes. What are brushes? There are pigments, powder pigments, that you mix with water. You just sprinkle some on top of the paper, you mix your colors, you choose your colors, you spray some water, they're gonna mix like watercolor, gonna dry, and then you can do whatever you want to do with this paper. It's a patterned paper. But honestly, I think they're very expensive, and again, uh, I don't wanna buy these unless they're not as expensive and it's not easy to find. So there's another one here that seems to be a little crackled and I'll show you how you can have this kind of result. This is another one with uh, darker colors. I really like it and I've used that for my flower. There's another one here with some purples and some pinks as well. Really, really nice. And these are in blue colors, but you, of course you can do this with any color, with greens, with oranges, with yellows, whatever colors you want to use. So I also use the background with this technique, but it's much lighter. I didn't use as much, but you will see it's economical. You don't need much. Uh, what you will need for this project is something that I consider being important is watercolor paper is watercolor paper because we're going to saturate the paper with water. You're not going to be able to do this with copy paper. I hardly ever use copy paper unless it's for, I don't know, I hardly ever use copy paper for my projects anyway. So it can be either really heavy cardstock, but watercolor is the best for this. This is 300 grams, it's a very heavy one, good brand, but you don't have to buy something really expensive. It's just going to drink a lot of water. So the first thing you're going to use are some chalk pastels. These are water soluble. These are the cheapest one you can find. You can find them in any good craft store. You can have the kids brands. It's totally fine with what we're going to do today. Uh, you're going to need some water in a spray. Um, what else? You might want to use in the end to fix it, some hairspray, very cheap ones. And something I wanted to show you as well is that you can store these. Usually the brushos come in a bottle, either where you have little holes on top, like salt and pepper, and you can sprinkle it, or it comes with a, you know, soft bottles and you can blow it out. Um, I, you, it's only to have some in advance. So you can take a little container like this. This used to be jam. You're going to use an X-Acto knife, but you can also use scissors for this. And you're going to take a little bit of your chalk, you don't need much for this, and just, you won't be able to see much, but just go over it like that, and you're going to put all the powder in here. It needs to be very thin. Don't make chunks. This way is maybe not the fastest way, but it's one way to make sure that it's really, really uh, in a powder form. This is to store it, and if you want to have some in advance. Honestly, it's nice, but you don't have to because it's so quick to do, you won't need long anyway. So I'm gonna use different colors for this example. I'm gonna use light blue, I'm going to use this yellow, and I'm gonna use also some pink, and we'll see where we go from that point. So I'm gonna start, you can start with every, any kind of color, and again, I'm, I may become a little closer. Let me see. Yep. Okay, so go slow in the beginning. Don't put too much. Make some tries to see what you like best. A little bit of this yellow. I could have used this yellow too. It's brighter, but I'm going to be fine with this one. We'll see. 
and this blue. And I'm trying to go up to the edge. And also what you're going to need is either a um, hair dryer or a heat gun because we're going to dry the paper. It's going to go much faster. Now I'm going to take my spray bottle filled with just tap water and we're going to spray. Don't start by spraying too close because this is very thin water and I did not pre-water my paper. Everything is going to blow away. Don't sneeze over there either because you're going to lose everything. So start from far, just the first ones. You see how already it's nice. I really like this effect. Now I can come a little closer and add a little more. And we're kind of going to add more and more water until you're happy with this. Oh, I think the colors are just gorgeous. I'm going to call it good, actually. And you can see the water is kind of going everywhere. You don't have a lot of control here. That's something you need to know. Not much control. I need to put a bit more water because it should not stay into this powdery um, form. It needs to blend. It needs to dissolve. I might use a bit more pink here because my paper is curling. If you don't want this to happen, you can put some weight on the sides. That could be a good idea. Adding a bit more color here. I need more of this blue. If you want to water it first, that's fine. I don't really, I, I did try to saturate the paper first. It didn't really do anything different, but you can give it a try. And now I really like the way it is, so I'm going to dry it. And your paper is going to flatten down when it dries. I'm just going to take away all this excess water here. And I do have a sheet of... Um, plastic under my paper there under this one here so let me just I don't want to move it too far away I'm just taking this excess water to help my paper dry even more And there you go. How beautiful is this? I mean, the colors are so beautiful. These three colors, I love them. I think I'm really going to make more. You could add more yellow or any of these colors if you wanted to. Here they blended really much, a little less here and there. They kind of stuck together, which I really like. Now at this stage, if you would put your finger here, you would see that even though there's water, there's still a lot of powder coming out. So what you need to do is take your uh, lacquer, hairspray, a very cheap one is good, and you're going to sp spray it. Don't come too close. Stay about 12 inches apart away from your paper. And that's what I'm going to do here. This is going to fix the colors. It's not going to give any shine to it. It's just going to give uh, it's just going to fix the colors. So if you want later to use a water uh, varnish on top to make it glossy, you will be able to put it without everything smearing. So you need to let this dry for a couple minutes because it's, again, watercolor paper. We've dried it before. Now the hairspray needs to sink into the paper. And after a couple of minutes when it's completely dry, you can cut out any uh, shapes you want, make your flowers. Um, these are not metallic colors, but if you can find metallic um, pastels, it would be absolutely perfect. And these pastels are so cheap. You're going to be able to do so much because you really don't use a lot. Look at this. And again, these are just with three colors. I've used only two colors here, yellow and uh, pink. I've used three colors here as well uh, with two different blues and some um, black. Same here two colors only. I just added some more in some areas to make it darker. And I've used three colors here 
and I've used four colors of this one because this this pink, this blue, these are darker blue, and there's also a little purple that I add to it. It looks really nice. It looks like um, space, actually. What do you think? I really like this paper. So this one is absolutely awesome. I Oh, this is from far my favorite, the one I've done until now. Look at this. Beautiful. And I'm going to show you another example uh, to get some kind of crackle effect. The one that I have here, can you see these? If I come a little closer, there are some crackled effects uh, that you can get just by pressing your paper down. So let me clean my space a little bit and I'll be back in just a second. All right, so now I'm ready to start another color. I haven't done any green yet and I don't have any colors of green. Don't know why I have four, five different blues, but I only have these three different greens. Um, so I'm going to give it a try. We'll see. So again, I'm going to start by my lightest color here. And I might add some yellow, actually. See, it's getting, it's getting so fast, I don't even think I'm going to put more in my containers because I don't really see the point, to be honest. I'm going to use this darker one. going away on the edges. Is this one is the color is not that different. So I might add yes, I'm gonna add the same yellow. I like this yellow actually. I hope it's gonna fit and match a nice way. And it works it works actually better if you add more color to it. More yellow and more light green. If you want to add more color on top of something that you already dried, you need to know that all the colors, as soon as you're going to put water on top, uh, unless you have sealed it, the water is going to lift off. And even if you sealed it, you really need to seal it really well if you don't want the colors underneath to come off because it's still water soluble. Okay, so now I'm going to do it again. Spray from way above. Yeah, that one's going to be quite dark, but you know what? I don't mind. Might put this here on the sides. You can tape it down if you really want to. Really saturating my paper. All right, I kind of like it. It's gonna be kind of different when it's gonna dry out. Might use a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of yellow on top actually little bit of yellow and I need to spray more. Okay, let me see. Is it still going to buckle a little bit? Yes. So it's going to buckle. But when you do this with your finger, it did it on the blue. I'm not sure it's going to do it here. But it tends to separate the, um, the colors. It's not doing it that much, but it made the paint separate like it's doing a little bit around here I don't know if you can see it but it does help it's not working with these colors that's funny but you can have this crackled effect if you want to push it like this a little bit you see let me see is it working maybe no it's funny okay I'm gonna dry it You could use a paintbrush too if you want to spread it around, but I don't want to do too much because I don't want this to be too muddy. There you 
go. And I really like these effects. Again, I'm going to try to come as close as I can to really see if you can get the texture. Because it looks, when you look at it, like velvet. When you touch it at this stage also, but again at this stage, it's going to be, it's going to come off on your finger. I need to take this piece off. Okay, look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. The colors are so vivid. All right. Looks like an ocean. You know, some areas on Earth that are absolutely gorgeous. Look at this one. Let me come from close because this is really what you'll see. Look at this. It's It does have a three-dimensional to it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of fun using these uh, this technique, and you're gonna be able to make really light backgrounds or darker backgrounds. You're gonna be like I showed you in this flower in this card. This is this was made with this technique. I did something much lighter to go in the background, a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow on the sides here, and to match I use a. Uh, matching uh, color on the back and here I did something a little different because I didn't want to put any background I was in something even more simple I might use a little tag and a little sentiment but again uh, the purpose of this video is not the card making by itself but it's just to show you how gorgeous and what you can do with these these are backgrounds like any kind of pattern paper you have and look at that and because it's it's heavy weight you can put it in place so easily. I just, you know, curled it a little bit to have this 3D effect and it's going to stay in place. And because my flower is dark, or in real life it looks a little darker than what I can see on my camera, I used a lighter background. And again, I didn't spray this one with um, any glossy varnish. I did paint some varnish on this one. You can see it's glossy. I don't know which one you prefer. Please leave me... Uh, um, the flower you prefer in the comments below if you think it, the shiny one is nicer or if the velvety one on the right looks nicer. It's really, I think both are nice and both are a little different. And also having a blue flower is not bad at all. I think that what could happen if I use the varnish is that it's going to make the contrast pop out even more. I think that's what's going to happen if I do use the varnish. So, um... I'll maybe try to do the same flower, what, one with the varnish, one without, to see if there's any kind of difference. But look at this. So easy and it's cheap to do. The, the most expensive thing would be your <clears throat> watercolor paper. But honestly, uh, you're going to do some wonders with this and you're going to be able to cut whatever you want. Use this as a tag. You can use this, again, if you really protect it, as a ATC card. Why not? And then just put few embellishments on top. They're absolutely gorgeous. So please, if you did like this video, give me some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button. And also share on social medias. Thank you so much. Take care and see you soon.